And you have to have some really hard decisions and discussions to determine what is the most important to your organization. The fifth and last control within business environment, within the identify function, is resilience requirements to support delivery of critical services are established. So when you're looking at this, you have to ask yourself, does the continuity of operations plan address the issue of maintaining or reestablishing production in case of an undesirable interruption, right? Uh, has capacity planning been determined? Is there a formal documented contingency plan? So when we look at the entire wheel, really, of NIST, and you've got identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover, what you see out of this control specifically is identification's ability to help inform the last area, which is recovery, and we'll obviously get to those in time. But having an identified capacity plan, having a continuity of operations, is what's going to be able to then determine and inform eventually your recovery capabilities should the worst happen. So does the organization have a contingency plan for resumption of company business, right? These are basic things that I think most organizations have spent a lot of time on in the last 10 years, and that is disaster recovery and business continuity. I think it's time to dust those back off, take a look at them, because you'll be surprised to find out that these two exercises and documents, if you have them, especially for larger organizations, will really help you inform the risk controls that we've been discussing with identification, and then help you determine what to be doing should the worst happen throughout the life cycle that you go through within NIST. So having a formally documented resilience plan out of your DR and your business continuity, having that set up, having that communicated within the organization becomes the real core to this uh, control. Can you continue to deliver all your critical services and having a resilience um, requirements set up so that you can do so? Now, resiliency is, uh, is an interesting addition uh, to kind of the vernacular within cybersecurity. Uh, I think, you know, of earlier days, it was all about pure recovery, coming back online. There was no uh, downtime, uh, you know, that was, um, you know, allowed to exist on an ongoing basis. What we need to maybe look at now is, and I, I had this discussion, if you take a look at the... Um, video uh, left of boom that I did with Sam Curry um, and uh, with uh, Patrick Sheehan of the Fellsway Group, when you look at service degradation, so sitting at 100%, everything is working exactly as you need, zero being you're dead in the water, is there a level at which you can operate your organization or your system, or as we established in IDBE4, the level that you can operate, right? Um, can you operate, say, effectively at 80%? Can you operate at 60%, at 20%? Whatever it is, can you operate in a degraded state and still be able to operate and effectively, you know, produce what it is your company, your organization uh, intends to, create and produce your brand, make that available, services, wh whatever have you. Or are you looking at it in an all or nothing type of a, uh, a vein, right? I think the, the view really needs to be, can you operate in a degraded state while you bring operations back up? What is that? What can you allow? Uh, what are your acceptable losses really within your organization that you can then use to bring things back on? Where this becomes important is when you start talking to people within a business line about, well, what's the most important thing to your business? And then you do that across the entire organization. Most people who have the jobs of doing this within disaster recovery and business continuity will tell you a funny little story about how everybody says that everything that they have underneath them is a tier zero and it is the most important thing. And the second that you apply a dollar sign to what happens when everything is a tier zero, the tune quickly changes from, you know what, that's not as important as I thought it was because we can't afford, honestly, for that to be a tier zero. And you have to have some really hard decisions and discussions to determine 
What is the most important to your organization? And that actually becomes a very keen theme as you go through the rest of the NIST controls. What are you going to protect the most? What are the aspects of the organization that you need to have detection on? What are the ones that you need to be able to respond to immediately? What are the ones that you need to be able to recover almost immediately or close to immediately to continue your operations as you've set them up? If everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. So looking here, what are the resilience requ resilience requirements needed to support those critical services? Are they established? And again, believe that we need to add in that NIST creates and communicated within the organization for this to be a truly effective control.